Whitson Dave, Saturday. The Sabbath, Eve of Pentecost. The lesson is taken from the treatise upon the Creed, addressed to catechumens by St. Austin, Bishop of Hippo. We are yet the unborn offspring of a great mother. Our Holy Mother the Church hath by the most sacred sign of the cross received you into her womb, and from thence she is now just about to bring you forth, as she hath already brought forth your brethren, with thrills of spiritual joy. But until, through the washing of regeneration, she bringeth you forth into true light, she feedeth you in her womb with such food as becometh your condition, and in gladness matureth her children for the glad moment of her delivery. This mother is not stricken by the doom of Eve, to bring forth children in sorrow, and they themselves often times weeping than laughing. Rather doth your spiritual mother annul the sentence of your earthly. Eve, by disobedience, endowed her offspring with death. The church, by obedience, giveth them newness of life. All the mystic prayers and ceremonies which have been and are still being performed over you by the ministry of the servants of God, exorcisms, prayers, spiritual songs, unbreathings, haircloth, prostrations, bearing of the feet, the dread which ye feel, albeit so safe, all these things, I say unto you, are the nourishment which ye are drawing from your mother while yet ye are in her womb that at the baptismal birth she may be able to present you strong and laughing babes unto Christ. Ye have also received the creed, which is the shield of the travailing mother against the venom of the dragon. In the Apocalypse of the Apostle John it is written, And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. That this dragon is the devil ye all know. Ye know likewise that by the woman is signified the Virgin Mary, who, herself a virgin, bore her virgin head, and who is revealed unto us as a type of the Holy Church, in that, even as Mary, though she bore a son, remained a virgin, so the Church doth in all times give birth to all her members, and yet is ever presented a chaste virgin to Christ. I have undertaken, with the help of the Lord, to expound every clause of the creed, that I may bring home to your understandings what each containeth. Your hearts are ready, for the enemy hath been shut out of your hearts. Ye have made profession of renouncing the enemy. At the moment of that profession it was not before men only, but in the presence of God and his angels that ye said, I do renounce him. Renounce him, not only in your words, but in your ways not only with your voices, but with your lives, not only with your lips, but in your works. Know ye well that the wrestling which ye have undertaken is a strife with an enemy who is subtle, and old, and patient, now that ye have once renounced him, let him never again find in you his works. Never again give him the right to bring you into bondage. O Christian, thou wilt be caught and exposed, if thou doest one thing and professest to another, if thou art faithful in name, and makest it to be evident by thy works that thou hast broken the faith pledge by this promise. If some while thou goest into a church to pray, and an unto the shows to join in applauding obscene representations. What hast thou to do any more with the pomps of the devil, which thou hast renounced? Amen. The lesson is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, 14. In Ilio Tempore. At the time, Jesus said unto his disciples, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. And so on. Homily by St. Austin, Bishop of Hippo. By these words of the Lord, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, he doth imply that himself is a comforter. The Greek word used namely, parakletos, signifieth also an advocate, and is used in that sense where it is written, we have an advocate, parakleton with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because, as we read elsewhere, the carnal mind is enmity against God. Or it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be, as we may say plainly, Nothing can make unrighteousness righteous. 
by the world. In this place, we must understand the lovers of the world, a love which cometh not of the Father. And therefore it is that this love of the world, which we strive to lessen and to destroy in ourselves, is contrary to the love of God, which is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither kneweth him, for to love the world is to lack those spiritual eyes, which are able to see him who is invisible, the Holy Ghost. But ye know him, saith the Lord to his disciples, for he shall dwell with you, and shall be in you. He will be in them to dwell in them, not dwell in them to be in them, for one must first be in a place before one dwell there. But lest the apostles should think that the words, He shall dwell with you, signified that he should visibly abide with them for a while, as do guests in the houses of men, the Lord saith in explanation, He shall be in you. Therefore is he seen that is invisible. If he were not in us we could have in us no knowledge of him, but he's seen in us, as we see our conscience. We see the faces of other men, but we cannot see our own. But of consciences we see none save that within ourselves. But our conscience is never elsewhere but within us. Whereas the Holy Ghost may be without us, as well as within us. He is given to be within us, and, unless he be within us, we can neither see nor know him, either within or without us. Then, after that he had promised the Holy Ghost, the Lord, lest they should deem that he was to give them that other comforter instead of himself, and that he himself was to be no longer with them, said also, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Therefore, although the Son of God hath made us by adoption sons of his own Father, and hath willed that the same who is his Father by nature should be our Father by grace, nevertheless, he showeth that himself hath toward us a love as of a father, where he saith, I will not leave you orphans. O Ramus! O God, who on this day didst teach the hearts of thy faithful people, by the sending to them the light of thine Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, thy Son, who liveth and reigneth with thee, in the unity of the same Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Benedict et vos omnipotens Deus, Potter, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen.